Hey guys, welcome back to another redstone video. Today we're going to take a look at automatic honey and honeycomb farms since 1.15 is around the corner, only two weeks until it's getting released. There were a couple of changes and bug fixes recently to bees, which made the farms with it in the early snapshots pretty much obsolete so you can make much better farms now. Right, the goal of this video is to show you the best possible way to make a honey or honeycomb farm, which you will need in case you need a lot of those blocks here. So you need honey or honeycomb to craft those blocks. The honey block is a really versatile block that you can use for flying machines. Or oh, it's also interesting to glide slowly next to it. The honeycomb block is just decoration. I'm gonna focus on automated farms in this video that use a dispenser. You can also farm honey or honeycombs manually. There's a couple of tricks to it. For example, once the bee nest is filled with honey, you can safely take out the honey if you sedate them by using a campfire below. But we're gonna focus on automated farms since that's what you want in the long run to get lots of that stuff. I did a ton of testing in order to find the most efficient honey honeycomb farm design and I want to present the result of the research. In case you're just interested in a block by block tutorial, check the link in the description that guides you there. But don't complain later, you'll miss some important details. All right, let's start with some basics in case you're completely new to 115 and honey farming. So those two new blocks are the bee nest and the beehive. You need those blocks in order to farm honey or honeycomb. The bee nest spawns naturally or regenerates naturally in flower forest or plains biomes. And there's always three bees inside of it. As soon as you would come close to it, you would exit the bee nest and fly around, try to pollinate flowers and also yeah, could come back and produce honey. There is a fill level of the bee nest or the beehive, um, which counts up to five. You can check it with the F3 menu and you can check the honey level. So if the honey level is at five, you can use shears to get honeycombs, or you could use an empty glass bottle to get honey. So if you shear the bee nest, or also the beehive, you will always get three honeycomb. And apart from being used to craft honeycomb blocks, you can also use those in order to get more beehives. And the beehive itself works exactly the same as the bee nest. The only difference, apart from that it's look, it looks different, is that it's renewable. While you can't get more bee nests without exploring, you really need to find them in the world and pick them up with a silk touch tool, you can always make more beehives. But there's really no difference in efficiency at all, and it doesn't matter for your farm if you use a bee nest or a beehive. All right, now let's talk about how we can automate this process. So we will need a dispenser, with either glass bottles or shears inside. So if you power this dispenser, you will get the honey bottle and the beehive is back to honey level zero. So the bees need to fill it up again. All right, in order to make this work as nicely as possible, you wanna completely fill up the dispenser with glass bottles so it's forced to shoot out the honey bottle. And then we can directly use a hopper below in order to pick that up. So let's take a new one. And now the honey bottle goes into the hopper at the bottom, which is really convenient so we don't have to sort it out out of the dispenser. Now, of course, we want to detect if the beehive is completely filled up with honey and then trigger the dispenser. You can either do that with observers that detect any change to the honey level of the beehive, or we can do that with comparators that give out a signal strength corresponding to the fill level of the beehive. So in case I got yeah, honey level of five, we got here the signal strength of 5 and also saw the observer blinking. All right, so basically there's two main concepts you want to use for either the, the honeycomb farm or for the, just the honey farm. In case of the honeycomb farm, we actually want to use the observer concept because um, every time the honey level changes, we will just trigger the dispenser at the top. But if you got shears in there, it doesn't matter if the dispenser gets triggered because the shears just won't get used in case the honey level is below five. We don't want to use this concept really for the honey farm because then we would get a couple of glass bottles shot out each time uh, and that's yeah not something we really want. In case of the honey farm, we just use the comparator instead and in case this reaches signal string five, then we trigger the dispenser in order to get the honey bottle. All right, so this is basically your design for honey and honeycomb, but yeah, got more details and there's actually more that goes into making an efficient farm. Let's quickly cover some of the improvements that were made to bees over the last snapshots. The early snapshot honey or honeycomb farms looked like this. We needed paints on the side here and two blocks of space in front, otherwise the bees could glitch into blocks and get suffocated. 
I'll just fly away. But that's not no longer necessary. You can just make a farm like this. Just a single flower in front and surround with blocks. This will work. It's also now possible is to have multiple hives next to each other without the AI getting messed up. But only to a certain extent, we'll cover that later. Let's take a quick look at the process how the honey level is raised in the hive. So we need those bees here that pollinate the flowers and then go into the hive. In the hive, they're gonna work for exactly two minutes or 2,400 ticks until the honey is produced. Then they would actually leave the hive again and it takes them pretty much exactly 20 seconds or 400 ticks until they pollinated the flower then would go back into the hive. So if I advance the time now by about two minutes, we'll see if the bee comes out. Now it takes exactly 20 seconds until it goes back in again. So basically in order to raise the honey level by one, uh, it will take 140 seconds. Can speed this up by using three bees, because the honey, or the beehive can hold up to three bees at the same time. So if you would use three bees with this setup here, um, you would get 13 honey per hour or 39 honeycomb. Adding additional bees in order to reduce the time where the hive isn't completely filled up with bees increases the efficiency slightly, but I would argue it's not worth it. So I tested this with four bees and I got 13 and a half honey per hour instead of 13. Five bees got about 14 and with six bees in total got about 14 and a half honey per hour. But the main lag cause of your honey or honeycomb farm will actually be the bee itself when it's outside of the hive. So I would argue to never use more than three bees for one hive because the, yeah, the improvement in efficiency will just lag your game. All right, now let's check out what happens if you build the farm right next to each other. So here we got 50 modules. And what I noticed is that the rates are a tiny bit lower than I would have expected them to be. I think one of the reasons is that the bees tend to group up like this, especially at the ends, and that influences the rates. Um, that grouping up behavior could be reduced by splitting up the modules a little bit, and then just every eight to 12 blocks not have a module, and just have a block instead. And yeah, doing so, the rates are actually a bit higher again. So I think that's actually something you should probably do. So I can already show my final design here. There, I got a gap every eighth module, and this way the yield per beehive is a bit higher than yeah, not having the gap in between. What also didn't work that great for me was a setup like this one here, where the hives are facing each other. They also got about one honey per hour less per hive. So it's still possible to do it like that, but I just wouldn't recommend it because there's more efficient setups. All right, so now you roughly know how to build your honey or honeycomb farm. A couple more details are important. I'll mention them in the tutorial later. But now I'm gonna give you the most important tip if you wanna build an efficient honey or honeycomb farm. Do not build it in the overworld. And the reason is that weather and the time of day would also influence the behavior of the bees. So in case it's raining or there's thunderstorm, bees would go into their hive again and not do any work and don't come out until the weather is clear again or it's daytime again. And that's detrimental, of course, for two reasons. I'm just gonna advance the time a little, by, a little bit here. Take warp 2400. So the two main reasons why this is bad is that first of all, well, they don't work. They don't produce any honey in that time. And the second reason is if the weather clears up or it's daytime again, then they would all come out at the same time. And if you have got a larger setup, this would mean quite a lag spike because usually there's usually only one bee outside of the hive. Now all of them outside of the hive. That's in case you have really large setup, it's gonna lag your game. In order to avoid those issues entirely with the time of day and the weather influence, you wanna build your honey farm in the nether or end dimension and for the honeycomb farm I would actually recommend the end dimension. So don't get me wrong, it's still possible to build your farm in the overworld, but it's just not as efficient as in the other dimensions. The factor is about yeah, two and a half times more efficient in the nether or end dimension. Right, I actually personally kind of like this because it encourages you for once to build a farm not in overworld, so I don't mind this at all. And I think this is really a really nice trick to go around the limitation with the beehive. All right, then yeah, this is the final version of my design. 
I built it up here in the end dimension. That's about roughly the size. I will probably build it on the server, but of course it, my design is completely modular, so you don't need to build it this large. Um, so just to you know some numbers, this will produce about 7,450 honey bottles per hour. So that's about roughly 18, 1900 honey blocks per hour. And it uses roughly 20% of my computer's performance, mostly for the bees. So there's always about 240, 280, sometimes a bit less. It's not equally distributed the bees outside. And that's really the main lag cause. If you would build this in the overworld and all the bees would come out at the same time, it would be about 1500 bees, then you could expect your game to lag already. So that's why if you build a farm of this scale, I would definitely recommend the end on as I mentioned. Let's also quickly talk about one little detail you might have spotted. I'm actually using a double line of hoppers below the hive. And the reason is while hoppers are transferring items, they have a cooldown where they don't pick up items above themselves. So what would happen is, if you would just have a single line hoppers pointing to the side, is that um, in some cases the honey bottle wouldn't get picked up by the hopper immediately and glitch to the side and land on the dirt and not get picked up. So I get around this issue by just having another line of hoppers below. And then in the end, the performance of this farm was actually better. Reason is that you didn't have those about 20 item entities laying around farm of this size, so I had about 2% loss. And the second reason is the hoppers didn't have to check for item entities because there are none in, in their chunk around themselves. So the hoppers, there's a lot of hoppers also performed better. There's one extra challenge we need to deal with in case you want to build a honeycomb farm. It's that you would generate three items at the same time and the hopper is only able to pick up one. The other two items usually fall out to the side. All right, let's take a look at the adjusted farm for that. So what I adjusted here, instead of placing the flower on dirt or grass, I put it on farmland. Reason is farmland is not as high as a normal block. That means hoppers below can pick up items. So like this. Yeah, and that's also the reason why I would recommend to build the honeycomb farm in the end dimension, since you need some um, water to hydrate the farmland, otherwise it would turn back into dirt. All right, so the hopper setup is also a bit different. We also got the extra hoppers under the farmland and one additional one on the side here, because some items on the array would fall out to the side. And yeah, this way we're collecting really all of the items. I've passed this for about two hours and I've seen one honeycomb for some reason glitching out to the side, but I would say more than 99 point something percent are getting collected there. Could probably also use hopper minecarts instead directly under uh, the beehive, but that's getting quite expensive in terms of lag to use a lot of hopper minecarts. So with this setup, you're really good. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how you can build such a farm. But yeah, I'm gonna show all the steps. First, you actually need to find some bees first in a plains or flower forest or flower plains biome. So it's actually kind of hard to find the bee nests and then usually the bees also take off in all kinds of directions. First thing you actually wanna do is to mine the bee nest so you got that out of the way. Then you also want to have some leads in the inventory, a couple of blocks and a flower. Next you want to search for the bees and, and grab them with the leads. Alright, so there we got two. That would kind of be enough. We don't need three, but usually there's a third one around. Okay, got this one here. And there's the other one. Two is enough because I just want to breed them and yeah, pay off bees enough. Right, actually let's do that with two bees. So the first thing we want to do is actually get them into the bee nest so we can transport them and we can breed them somewhere else. All right, I'm just gonna place down a couple of blocks. We're gonna box the bees in because they really have, tend to just take off wherever they want. So there we go. To get the other one up and inside. And I'm just gonna put a roof in it just to be a hundred percent sure. And that one just flew out. Okay, now we got it. Okay, then I'm gonna place down the bee nest again and one flower in front. Get rid of the leads. Now we have to wait a little bit until they go both inside. Should take about 20 seconds at most to get the second one. I think the first one was already at the pollen at the butt. That one any moment should go inside. Then we can just break the bee nest and transport it. So you can see there's no uh, MBT tags at the bee nest. Shows you that 
doesn't just not the bee nest item has some bees inside. So we can transfer the two bees inside of the bee nest wherever we want it. So next you want to go to the location where you want to build the farm in the end. For me, it's literally in the end. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it's most efficient to build the farms in the nether or end dimension. Right, so the next goal is basically to breed a couple more bees and also make some honeycomb so we can get more beehives. Alright, so I created a little room that we're going to breed the bees later. Just something to prevent them from flying away. And I'm going to set up a little honeycomb farm here on the side so we can make more hives. Okay, I'm just going to punch this out. That's where we're going to place the bee nest later. So I just need a block that can be powered. Concrete here. And then dispenser facing downwards. I also kind of need to up the dispenser because it's only getting by Q getting powered by QC. We could use rails, bells, node blocks, pistons. <laughs> it all works. And then we also want some hoppers. I should collect most of the honeycomb later. Of course, also put a, at least some shears in there. And close this again. Put down maybe a barrel. And also a grass block and a flower on top. That should be about it. That's the farm done. Now we can place down our bee nest. Now it's actually going to take a little while until they come out. This kind of save their progress when they enter. Or if you break the block. So it could now take about two minutes until they would exit again. Let's stick up this a little bit. Of course, the first thing we want to do is actually breed those guys. I'm waiting for the second one. Okay, that's the second one. All right, since we got the flower in our hand, we can now breed the bees. And now we got a third one. Okay, then there's nothing more we can do right now. Uh, I'm going to just select another item so they would now pollinate and make honeycombs. Meanwhile, we could actually start building the farm. Um, so can, maybe you can skip ahead. Uh, we're just going to make a ton of bees now and take the honeycomb we produce here in order to make more beehives. All right, so once you got a good amount of bees, you kind of want to stop the honeycomb farm. You can just place a carpet in front or any block that has a hitbox to prevent the bees from going outside. And now we also need to get the other bees into the hives. Um, the problem is if you would break the hives while there's still bees outside, the other bees would attack you. And that's a problem because they try to kill you and also once they sting you, they're also going to die rather quickly. So we're going to get all of those bees inside so we can just break the hives later uh, without risking getting attacked. So what I already did, I made sure that all of those um, have pollinated so they enter the, the hive really quickly. So that was the first batch. I'm going to fill them up completely with three bees. You can also place a carpet in front, just be 100% sure they don't go out again. I kind of want to do this step by step just to make sure you always get three inside. So now we got four left. You can also maybe guide them a little bit with the flowers. I'll just push them. Okay, now I just got one left. Sometimes it's just stupid. <laughs> okay, now they're all inside. So this carpet also prevents them from going out in case we want to do something else. And now we want to relocate those, so we can safely break it now. Show you in game on survival, so it's no problem at all. And we can pick up the hives again. Unfortunately, there is no way of telling how many bees are inside of a, a hive. So if you check if the F3 menu, it doesn't show. If you check the beehive directly, it says MPT two tags, but not how many bees are exactly inside. Be nice maybe if that feature gets added later. Currently, we're in 1.15 pre release 2, so I'm not sure if that maybe will be added in the future, but at the moment it's a bit of a problem because we really want a hive with three bees inside. Okay, we can also keep a stock of bees here in case we want to breed them later. We need more, so you can also see as soon as you uh, break the carpet in front and if they've been in there for quite a while, they go out immediately. So, once you got a sufficient amount of beehives for your purposes, of course can start building a farm, in case you watched the whole video or you're quite familiar with the design. Only tricky part is actually just place down those beehives in the end. Right, I'm going to build a module 
of eight for both the honey and the honeycomb farm. I'm gonna start with the double hopper, like I mentioned earlier. Just to make 100% sure, we're gonna pick up all the honey bottles. And then I'm gonna continue here in the back. Just gonna place down two blocks. And then downwards facing dispenser. All right, then we can continue. That's gonna be for the comparators. Okay, next we either need a glass block or a slab so the redstone wire isn't cut. And put redstone dust on all the remaining blocks. Okay, so this is the redstone. Then of course we also need either dirt or grass blocks or pots so will also work in front. And some glass blocks on the side. And also, yeah, we want to fill up the dispensers with glass bottles, of course. It's important that you fill it up completely, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Yeah, I'm not gonna do it for each one. Um, and then we also want hoppers here. The hopper is kind of perfect because as soon as we place down the um, the beehive later, the bees could exit. And we still need to kind of break the carpet um, which we place down on top of the grass here. And the carpet basically prevents the bees from flying outside. Um, so the idea is that we place down the beehive, break the carpet, and replace it with a flower. In case you um, don't do that immediately, and you would place down all the hive blocks, happens a lot of the cases that the bees would fly to the side and um, kind of obstruct the, the place where you want to uh, place down um, the, the beehive. So that's why it's kind of important to do this step by step. So I'm just gonna get a bunch. They don't, usually don't stick up, but you can do that in creative. So I'm just gonna place carpet everywhere. And if you place down the beehive now, you're guaranteed the bees won't fly outside. So then you can easily place all of the beehives down. And now, of course, we need the flowers in front, and the hopper is just perfect here in this case, because it prevents even baby bees from flying out, in case you got baby bees in there. Uh, but you can still access the carpet. So in this case, um, it was actually fine because the bees haven't been inside of the hive for two minutes before I picked it up, so it's super easy. But in case your bees have been inside for two minutes, they would uh, exit immediately and then you could have the trouble that you can't place on the next hive next to it. Alright, now it's just the waiting game. Farm is finished. I would also recommend maybe is to add another hopper line here on top and one central storage for additional glass bottles. All right, so the farm is working now. Bees have exited the hive. So a farm of this size of eight modules would produce a little bit over 100 honey per hour. So it's about 13 honey per module. Uh, so that's enough to get about 25 honey blocks per hour. So it's not really fast. Uh, making a really large and efficient farm will take you quite a while. The most, most work actually goes into breeding the bees and getting them inside of the, the beehives. Maybe you should look into that later and maybe try to make an AFK farm for that at some point if you want to leave one on a large farm might be worth trying to do that okay next step is the honeycomb farm of course you can also use the same redstone for the honeycomb farm that you use for the honey farm but there's also the option to do it with the observers which is more compact just want to mention it the main difference is basically that we got another line of hoppers under the farmland in this case uh, to collect uh, all the honeycomb all right, um, then let's do this over here. I'm gonna do eight modules again, and we'll start here with the grass blocks just for the flowers later. We still need a hole to make farmland. And do the redstone first. So observers, and then block that can be powered on top. Next, downwards facing dispenser, uh, shears in it. 
and then we can start with the hopper line. Just some scaffolding. <laughs> okay, here's the hopper line. And we'll need a, another one under the grass or future farm land block. Actually, we need a hopper, an extra hopper on both sides. Then, could I have it pointing into a chest maybe here? Okay, like this. Um, no, I actually want to put in some some water. The farmland doesn't dry up and converts back. Just the hole. And I'm gonna place it on carpet again. In case you got actually, the, as I mentioned earlier, that the beehives or the bees don't exit immediately, it's not necessary, but. Um, yeah, I don't know <laughs> what you got. <laughs> so I'm just gonna do it uh, how, it's, how it's gonna work in every case. Here we can actually place down a couple more glass blocks on the side. Um, that basically prevents them from landing on top of those glass blocks, which happened when I tested it first. Okay, then glass blocks. And we still kinda need the redstone here on top. Kind of got that. So the silent version to update the dispenser is just using alternating activator and golden rails. As I mentioned earlier, I can also use, for example, bells. So any block that would give out a block update. Pistons would work. Um, an old block would also work. All right. And then we can place down the beehive. The three bees inside. So the carpet keeps them inside. So they don't exit immediately and basically fly uh, to the location we actually want to place them. Okay, then hoppers to prevent them from flying out, but still being able to access the carpet. And then you can replace the carpet with flowers. And also a line of blocks here, since they also tend to land on the lower blocks. Definitely saw that happening. All right. This is your honeycomb farm. This will pr would produce about 310 honeycomb per hour. All right, that's about it. Hope this video was useful for you, and now we can start mass producing honey blocks or honeycomb blocks. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.